Warner Brothers Montreal's long-teased game has finally been announced, Gotham Knights. Something very different from what we've typically seen from Batman games. Some folks are excited, some folks are skeptical, but we've got some early information, so if you didn't tune in for DC Fandom, we've got you covered here with 10 things you should know about Gotham Knights. Let's get started off with number 10 and talk about the characters. This is a character-based game with seemingly four main lead playable characters. It's all focused on the Bat family, you know, Batman's famous and important allies. Let's break them down. First, there's Dick Grayson as Nightwing. Dick Grayson, of course, was the first Robin who went on to become the very awesome Nightwing of Bloodhaven. He's extremely popular. We've seen him in other Batman video games before, and he's a welcome addition. We also have Barbara Gordon as Batgirl. Barbara Gordon, of course, is Jim Gordon's daughter, sometimes known as Oracle, sometimes Batgirl. She's been around forever in a lot of different interpretations, but we're excited to see her really get her time in the sun here. Uh, also, we have Tim Drake as Robin, technically the third Robin, and in this story, it looks like he's portrayed a little bit on the younger side. And of course, we have the second Robin, Jason Todd, in this game as Red Hood. The Red Hood, of course, in recent years has totally blown up and become a really iconic thing for a lot of fans, and here he's essentially reconciling his differences with the Bat family and their methods, and according to the official website, he's willing to do non-lethal means with this team. So while yes, Red Hood is still very much shooty gunman, those are definitely going to be non-lethal rounds. Those are the four playable leads, and the potential here is really huge because these characters are all surprisingly deep story-wise, but also combat-wise, and you can already tell in the gameplay. Everybody fights with a different weapon and a little bit of a different methodology and training style. All, of course, kind of branching off of Batman, but in their own unique ways. So while I think there might be some people out there that are disappointed that you don't get to play as Batman, I think people who aren't typically really well-versed with the Bat family will find a lot to like here. Now over at number nine, yes, confirmation this is an open world game. To quote them uh, directly from the press release, Gotham Knights is an open world action RPG set in the most dynamic and interactive Gotham City yet. You patrol Gotham's five distinct boroughs and drop in on criminal activity wherever you find it. Uh, they've also described this Gotham in official documents as a living, breathing city, but this is probably a lot of marketing buzzwords and marketing jargon, so who knows what that really means. Uh, we did see pedestrian vehicle traffic, though, in the gameplay, which makes things possibly a little bit more interesting. You know, how much will the Bat family actually interact with the public of Gotham? <laughs> that remains to be seen. We have a lot of questions here. The Bat cycle is also featured heavily as a mode of transportation around the city. Frankly, I think it looks pretty damn awesome, you know, with driving and boosting and jumping. Then we also got to see that Robin can traverse using the Justice League's teleportation technology satellites. They just kind of briefly dropped that as a mention for an explanation for how he can kind of warp around short range, but it still seems pretty cool and kind of creative with the greater universe. It seems like there's going to be crime in progress type side missions to kind of participate or jump in while you're just cruising around the world. I'm just curious to see how much the transportation works out. Who gets what type of vehicle? Can you upgrade them? Will they have skins? What's the deal here? Again, we're just gonna have to wait and see. But over at number eight, let's talk about the story. First of all, this game is not connected to the Arkham universe. This doesn't take place after Arkham Knight or anything like that. That's the Suicide Squad game, the other game announced. This game, Gotham Knights, seemingly is its own thing just based in the general Batman DC universe. That's what the press releases and marketing have told us so far at least. You know, here's a quote. Introducing an original story set in DC's Batman universe, Gotham Knights offers a dynamic and interactive Gotham City where an exploding criminal element has swept through the streets. With the Belfry as their base of operations, this new era of heroes will solve mysteries that connect the darkest chapters in the city's history and must defeat notorious villains in epic confrontations. Players must save Gotham from a descent into chaos and reinvent themselves into their own version of the Dark Knight. That sounds good to me, and again, most importantly, I think the potential is there because of the Bat family. This game has the potential to introduce a lot more people to the actual character depths behind Jason Todd, Barbara Gordon, Dick Grayson. I just hope they go really far in it. I hope they go all in because there's so much they can do. Each one of these characters has, of course, warranted their own comic books many, many times for really good reason. 
Now over at number seven, some little things you can notice from the trailer, you know, in the gameplay put out, just some Easter eggs and stuff. McManus26 on Reddit points out a screenshot from the Gotham Knights trailer with the photo of Jim Gordon and Barbara, where they reference that Jim Gordon is dead. Uh, the police detective badge has an owl on top of it. Is that kind of alluding to something? Alluding to the fact that the Court of Owls is also hinted in this trailer? With Batman saying that he doesn't trust the police since Jim died and an owl being attached to the police badge. Does this suggest that the Court of Owls is in control of the police? We'll have to wait and see. Of course, the other big question is how did Jim Gordon die in this universe? Will that be revealed? Really hope it does, because that's an interesting plot point. Also, the introduction shot of Barbara in the cinematic trailer confirms that this is the Barbara Gordon who was previously in a wheelchair as Oracle. That's probably obvious to a lot of fans, but considering, you know, we don't know which universe has what and who has what going on, you can consider this at least a confirmation of her character arc, so to speak. Um, also, some eagle-eyed folks have pointed out that Star Labs is a location in the game, or at least some spin on it here. Uh, we also see a hospital sign for the Edward M. Elliott Center, definitely a nod to Hush, aka Thomas Elliott, who also comes from an important family, like Bruce Wayne. Uh, the Belfry is also confirmed to be the base location, which is a cool lesser known Batcave offshoot that mainstream fans probably know much less about. So there's a lot they can get creative with here. And honestly, in terms of Easter eggs and little references and stuff like that, there's probably gonna be so many more of these. So we're really excited to point those all out in later videos. Cause just judging from this brief gameplay and trailer thing, if we've got this much cool, fun little info and tidbits to chew on, there's only gonna be more. Now, next at number six, you should know that Gotham Knights is playable either solo or as a two-player online cooperative experience. People have been saying that this looks like a full-on games-as-a-service type game, similar to something like, like a Warframe or a Destiny or a Division or even the Avengers, but limiting it to two players makes me feel a little bit better about that. Maybe it's not really full games-as-a-service. Apparently, there also is no local couch co-op, but we did see drop-in co-op in action with the gameplay reveal video. Co-op takedowns return from Arkham Knight, kind of. Seemingly, they took that idea and ran with it here. It was super fun and dynamic and cinematic in Arkham Knight, but with their own twist here, we can kind of see a bit more of a setup for it. You know, we see one character grabbing and holding an enemy and essentially turning that enemy towards another player to kind of kick off the move here. So I'm wondering how much variation and experimentation we can get with this kind of stuff. Because if it's like a full on gameplay mechanic, it could be pretty great. Still, the most important thing for me to point out is that I'm probably gonna play this game solo and I'm just happy that this game supports that. It's not really turning its back on me, at least from what we're hearing from the initial announcement. Now down to number five, let's talk about the elephant in the room here, the RPG elements. This is dubbed by Warner Brothers straight up as a third-person, open-world, action-adventure RPG. And looking at the gameplay, yup, straight up, there are RPG elements. Everything is a little bit busier on screen, and enemies look like they have a level ranking attached to them. Personally, I'm not a fan of. I just worry it will diminish the combat. The potential is there to kind of really shift things in a way. Just think of how Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Origins did it. While, yes, many people like that new combat, it still definitely fundamentally changed things. Now, I am, however, on the positive side a bit more into the loot collecting and upgrading your bat tech type of stuff because that can kind of at least make a little bit of sense here at least from what they're suggesting because as you can tell every character has their own weapon and combat style and area of expertise like Robin has more stealth stuff going on while Barbara is a hacker I wonder how much they'll dive into that and, and whether or not that ties into the RPG upgrade trees and stuff it seems pretty likely also the characters have been shown with multiple costumes Robin has had some big variations as well as Batgirl with just the classic eye covering to then also having a full cowl look. This stuff seems like it could be fun. Upgrading and beefing up your character for DC characters in Injustice 2 was totally awesome, and I was skeptical of that at first, so we're hoping for the best here. Now over at number four, it seems like there will be special abilities for each individual character, judging by the bars in the bottom corner of the screen during the gameplay. We did get to see Robin and Barbara's in action, although we're not sure if these are just tertiary abilities or if like these are their full on ultimates. Still, there's more potential here for cool shit, especially if, like I said, they really embrace each character's specialties. Will Barbara have some like super high powered hacking ability? Will Jason Todd have a special ability to just do like more cartwheels? I'm spitballing, I have no idea. But uh, yeah, like I said, there's potential for a lot here. Now down to number three, let's talk about confirmed villains because of course the Bat world is nothing 
without its villains. Confirmed so far is Mr. Freeze with his full on boss battle, which looked pretty crazy and over the top. He has a plot to kind of like freeze the city, but by harnessing the weather or something, just Mr. Freeze stuff. Not only that, apparently the different types of boss battle style attacks he has will scale depending on the leveling. But of course, we also got a tease in the trailer for the Court of Owls and the Talons in the game, which is incredibly exciting. We haven't really seen a video game interpretation of these guys. And just in general, the Court of Owls has quickly become an iconic new Batman thing. And it's just really exciting to see a video game studio be able to just kind of flesh this out. Will they follow the comics to a T or will they make their own spin on it? I don't know, but I'm surprised they didn't show more Court of Owls because it has the potential to kind of like steal the show here. But of course, the teases and lead up to this game suggested a lot more, um, also like the League of Assassins alongside the Court of Owls. So there could be a lot more going on here that we still don't know yet. Now down to number two, of course, we have to acknowledge one of the other big things, and that is the fact that Batman is dead in this game. Bruce Wayne is found dead, and that's all we really know. The Bat Family is on their own, which makes, like I said, the story very interesting because a lot of times some of the greatest Bat Family stories are built around them dealing with Batman. Here they are completely on their own and probably mourning Batman, and there's a lot they can do. At DC Fandom, Warner Brothers Montreal's creative director Patrick Redding explained why he's dead, saying, we want to take away any certainty, any feeling of safety, so we could take a Gotham City where Bruce Wayne has been operating as Batman for like 15 years with all that history, his network of allies, and then just take him out of the picture. It demands the players really figure out how would I step up and how would I protect Gotham City? So it seems like there was some sort of disaster. Batman did not survive it. Apparently the Batcave is ruined and he left behind this message. And that's all we know. But of course there is tons of speculation out there because this is this is Batman we're talking about. This is Bruce Wayne. Is he really dead? I mean, gameplay wise, with you playing as the Gotham Knights, it seems like they are really committing to that fact, but is there gonna be some sort of surprise, some sort of reveal, some sort of plot twist that we're not clued on yet? Are they just keeping Batman out of the picture now to market the game and then later they'll blow something out like he comes back from the dead? Who knows, we're spitballing. But the prospect of a game where Batman is dead is very ballsy because of Batman's mainstream acceptance and how he literally will sell games just on the name alone. Without him, things are really interesting. But down to number one, of course, just some quick housekeeping. So here's the deal. It's coming out in 2021 and it's releasing on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and the pro versions of those consoles, as well as PS5 and Xbox Series X. So this is going to be like a multi-generational, but kind of next gen game. And I'm looking forward to seeing that in action. Like I said, though, we still have so many other questions. How are all the abilities going to work out? How does the loot system work? How much of a loot system is there? How big is the open world? Is this really going to be in a games of service type direction or not? Still, as a Batman comic book fan, I am incredibly excited just seeing what they have here. And we can't wait to hear more soon. And we'll definitely keep you guys informed. So if you enjoyed this video, maybe you'll learn something. Clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. And if you're new, maybe consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell, because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.